So as I said earlier on, any time there is an imbalance in price, the following will be created. It could be just one, two of them, or all of them will be created at the same time. All right, the first is a gap, the second is a liquidity void, and the third is a fair value gap. The gap is an empty space between the close of a candle and then the opening of the subsequent candle. So this is um, a series of candles, three candles. So you can see that from um, the second candle, this is the close of the second candle. And then this is the opening of the first candle. The rule is that whenever a candle closes, the next candle should open at the same place, at the same level the first candle, uh, the previous candle closed. So you can see here that these two candles are have the same uh, close and open price. Unlike the first and the second candle, you could see that the first candle closed here and then the second candle opened here, leaving this space. And this is the kind of gap we are referring to. This is common to most people. So the thing is that um, the gaps, it is believed that all gaps will always fill, like the gaps will always fill. And why are we saying the gap will always fill? So you remember from the beginning, we said that imbalances, right, are supposed to be uh, corrected. That is, the market is supposed to be balanced. So wherever there's an imbalance, the market will find a way to come back to it, to balance it, right? So in here, if we're looking at the same kind of um, consolidation, where we said at consolidation, right, the market is at equilibrium, right? So maybe there could be a consolidation somewhere here, right? The market was at equilibrium. There wasn't too much of a trend, but because the sell orders increased drastically, right, the market pushed down. So here we could see that there's this silk candle here, and then all of a sudden there was a big push, right? Which forced the market to open at a different price level. So that's the reason why it created a gap, which is an imbalance. And so, so far as it's an imbalance, then price will come back to the imbalance to rebalance itself. So in here, we have an example of uh, a gap. We have a very small gap. I use this example because of the wick. Most people think that um, if there's a wick across, um, a gap, then it means that a gap has been closed, right? So to, to consider a gap to be closed, we want to see um, the body of a candle close or above the, the gap space, right? So here, this is the gap. We want to see a full body close to it. Now, what we are again saying is that we don't want to use the gap as an entry technique. We don't want to sell from the gap or buy because there's a gap. What you want to do is that we want to get a direction, right, using a gap, or we want to get a target using a gap. So if we were looking left and then we found a reason to buy, right, the reason to buy and we, um, we were targeting, then we are going to use this gap as target. This gap is going to give, give us more confirmation that we should buy on this support level. And you know, when it's, we, we talk about support, we don't mean uh, this uh, vertical or horizontal lines, but we are talking about a certain kind of candles, all right? Now, you can see that price traded to the gap, closed the gap, and then fell. The, the market didn't fall because of the gap, because of this gap, but because of this, which we are going to look, um, maybe in the, look at in the next uh, slides. So this is what we, use. we are not using the gap as an entry technique, but as a target to confirm direction, All right? Next, we look at liquidity for it. And uh, as I said, right, liquidity void, fair value gaps and gaps are all in supply and demand, just the names, right, the naming. And because we are more inclined to uh, ICT, but also why we, we also do supply and demand. So I prefer using the ICT terms, right? So 
um, a liquidity void is where the market was one-sided, right? Or a portion of the market uh, or the chart showing large buy candles or sell candles, right? So in this example, you can see that we have large sell candles, only sell candles are displayed here. So here, they were buying activity, but the buying activities were small. So in this, or inside this candle, there were buying attempts. The market pushed up here. So there were buyers here at the wake of the candle. There were also buyers at the sell, uh, at the wake of the candle here because market sold here and they were able to push it up. There were buyers. So all in this liquidity where the buy activities are shown inside the wake. Okay, so all of these spaces were controlled by the sellers. So because there's a display of just sell candles, we call it what a liquidity void, an imbalance, right? And you remember we saw the form of imbalances in the um, previous um, uh, video, I think lesson uh, 3A, right? So imbalance is where one side of the market is controlled by, um, or uh, the market is controlled by one side or one group of players. In this case, we are looking at what sellers controlling the market. So it is causing an imbalance. So we have a buy scenario where there's just a display of buy candles, right? Just a display of buy candles here, causing an imbalance. So here, the sell activities were um, inside a week, right? So market went up and was pushed down. So there were sellers here. There were sellers at the week. So this, in this example, we have a liquidity void where there is a display of just sell candles, right? And therefore, again, what we said is that imbalances have to be corrected. So because there was this um, liquidity void here, if we had a reason to pick a trade here, right? Then the target would be what to fill this particular liquidity void. So liquidity void are not entry techniques. We could have gotten an entry here because of this buy candles right here to sell. But we are not selling because of the liquidity void. We are selling because of the candles here, right? And we are targeting because of this liquidity void. So if we had bought here, the target would be at the top here because of this liquidity void, right? So liquidity voids are not used for entries, but as targets. They provide us reasons why the market should uh, be traded in a certain direction. Remember, void or a void is an imbalance and therefore should be rebalanced, right? Okay. And finally, we have a fair value gap. So the fair value gap is a trade candlestick pattern in which the wake of the third candle does not reach the wake of the first candle, right? So we have a first candle, a second candle, and then a third candle. And so this is what gives us the pattern, right? You see the wake of the first candle and the wake of the third candle do not meet, right? So in case this wake had extended here, then we can call this pattern a fair value gap, right? But because the wick didn't reach there, that's the reason why we are calling it a fair value gap. Is there an ideology behind it? Is what is it does it make sense to call this an imbalance and why? Now, like the uh, liquidity void where we had a series of sell candles, we said that what the market should rebalance itself. Right, to rebalance this um, like this, go back here. Okay, in here, we said the market should rebalance itself because there were only sell activities here. The same thing applies to this, right? There were sellers in the liquidity void and so the market should rebalance itself. In here, this could be a buy candle. It doesn't matter the, the color of the candle, right? This could be a buy candle. 
This could be a sell candle, and this could be a buy candle. It could be a sell candle, a buy candle. So far as the wick don't reach each other, then this, that space is called what a fair value gap. And what is the brain behind it? Now, remember, in the uh, first instance, I said that they are buying activities or sell activities at the wick of a, a buy candle or a sell candle. So in, on, inside this candle, right, they were attempt to sell, to buy, sorry, they were attempt to buy. And inside this candle also, they were attempt to buy, which all failed, right, they all failed. So inside the third candle, since buying activities, let's look at where the buying activities are. Let's represent them with uh, a rectangle. Right. So in here, we have buying activities. Again, there were buying activities here. There were buying activities here, right? There were buying activities at this week. There are also buying activities at this week. And then there were buying activities at this week. But we don't know the next candle. So in here, if we're considering spaces, right? How do I change the color? If we're consider, uh, considering spaces where there were no buying activities, it will be what? Inside this, right? Because this buy attempting to correct this one, it didn't reach, right? So there were, um, there were no buying activities here and there were no buying activities here, right? So if a candle close opens and then the wick doesn't make it here, then there's an imbalance there. So you can see that here too, there were no buying activities, right? So that is where the imbalance is. The market in this space, right? There were only sell activities, right? In this whole candle from here, there were only sell activities from to this, there were only sell activities, right? But the market attempted to correct this sell activities. Right? So it corrected a portion of it here, but couldn't correct this one. So if the wick had gone here, then we can say that, okay, the sell activities have been corrected with what the buy activities. So, so we won't consider uh, it as what an imbalance, but because that correction couldn't take place, then we can call it what an imbalance, right? So I explain it again because it's important to me for you to understand why. So in here, this candle attempted to correct the imbalance in this candle. Remember, this imbalance in here there were buying activities, right? In here, there were buying activities. So you can see that from here to here, there were buyers. But from here to here, there were no buyers. As at the time, this candle wasn't open. So here, this was where there were no buyers, right? Now this candle opens here, attempt to correct the sell activities by fail to what correct the uh, or and so ended here. So there was this space left. That is why the imbalance is created and we call it the fair value gap. Some people there in supply and demand, we call it the inefficiency, right? So there was inefficiency here. So inefficiency is the situation where the first candle, the week of the first candle and the week of the third candle do not meet. So it could be a buy candle. So we could have, let's say one buy candle, So we have one buy candle, right? One sell candle. Sorry. If it is a buy candle, then the sell candle should start here. We have one cell candle here, giving us an engulfing, and then another cell candle 
here, right? So we have the wick of this candle. Mm -hmm. Then the wick of this. So in here is again a fair value gap. This is a fair value gap. Considering the rig and this rig, we have a fair value gap. So it doesn't matter the color of the candle, right? It doesn't matter the color of the candles. So far as there's a space between this rig and this rig, this fair value gap is created because of the inefficiency or the inability of the buyers to what, correct the sell activity in this second candle, right? Okay. All right. Okay. So let's go on. So the fair value gap can be used both as a target and as an entry. It can be used both as a target and as an entry technique. So as an entry technique, you want to be bias or sellers above or below 50%, at 50% or above it or below it. For instance, if we are looking for sell entries, then we want to sell at 50% of the gap, that is half of it, 50% of the gap, if you want to sell, or slightly above 50% of the gap. Then if it is buying, you want to buy, you want to buy what, below 50% or at 50%. Now, the confirmation, you should look for confirmation. It's not normal to take um, trade on fair value gap just like that. Even though as we go on, we, may, we will build on the fair value gap to know when exactly you take trade within them. But for now, if you want to confirm that, you, or you want to use a fair value gap as an entry, then the level that you've marked, after marking a 50%, you can go look to a lower time frame. This will be switching or be, moving from one lower time frame to another to find if the 50% level or below the 50% level that you want to have your buy entry or above 50% level that you want to have your entry is in line with what an other block, right? It should be in line with a PDRA before you can pick your trade for now. Okay, let's look at some examples. So this is GBP USD one hour, right? We mark all the fair value gaps. This is a fair value gap. You can see that the wick of this first candle did not meet the wick of this third candle, right? And then see how price traded into the fair value gap and then went up. Then again, here we have a fair value gap. Price traded into 50% of the fair value gap and went up. Here, I didn't mark this one, but we have a fair value gap here. We have a fair value gap here. Price closed the fair value gap, right, and went up. In, in here too, we have a, we had a fair value gap, small fair value gap, right, closed. And then we have a fair value gap here, right? Price traded into it, dropped for, a short while and went up. And then we have this fair value gap that has, hasn't been traded into yet. Okay, as of the time we are preparing this. Now, we want to uh, focus our attention on this space or a fair value gap uh, because of the example that we said uh, we should go to a lower time frame to find an entry, right? So this is the, uh, the chart that we just, um, just uh, finish watching and then in here we've added a 50 percent of the fair value gap so 50 percent of the fair value gap was marked with the blue line so we go down to a five minutes chart right 
So we see that the line that we drew is in line with this other block, right? You can see there's a fair value gap here and a fair, a fair value gap here, which was closed and price traded into this other block. So with this, right, we would have had an entry with about two or three pip stop loss. All right. Okay. So this was a one hour chart and this was a five minutes chart. So we look at the final example, right, where we combine almost everything. Now here, we can see a liquidity void. There was a display or just sell candles, right? Just sell candles were displayed. displayed. There were no buy candles in here. Okay, so looking at this, if you had a reason for picking a trade at this level, what and where would you be targeting? We'll be targeting this whole fair value um, liquidity void to be corrected. We'll be expecting the market to correct all this liquidity void. And let's see how the correction happened. Right, there was this fair value gap. Fair, first there was this fair value gap here. You can see this fair value gap. Price student to uh, almost 50% of the fair value gap or close the fair value gap, right, and drop. And this is a daily chart. So this was a significant uh, trade, right? Good trade. Again, price went up into the upper, the lower wick of this fair value gap, right, and dropped. It dropped, right, and came back and gave us what, and created or engineered liquidity. So liquidity was created here because of what equal highs. We will look at liquidity in detail. So liquidity was created, price straight almost into 50% of the other block um, of the fair value gap, almost into 50%. And then this is a daily chart. So we don't expect to take trade here inside the fair value gap, rather we'll go to a smaller time frame to find a reason to, to take a trade here. Okay, so assuming you didn't find any reason, we go back to our market structure, which um, tells us to what look for um, a trade after a shift in market structure and a break in market structure. So we had a break in market structure. Price traded um, above three previous daily highs, right? So we broke structure. And so we could also add um, our um, uh, FIB to find a discount premium and equilibrium. So if you draw your FIB from this high to this high, this should be around the 61.8%. Mm -hmm. It should be around the 61.8%, so it is below equilibrium. So again, we could be looking for a smaller time frame entry to minimize our RECs, right, and pick the trade. So when you pick the trade here, where would we be targeting? We'll be targeting this high, this equal high, because liquidity had been engineered, right? And then when you look here at this side, there's a, there, there are a series of buy candles. Now, Looking at this, if you go back to the weekly chart, you will find out that you will find out that um, if you go back to the weekly chart, where was I? You will find out that these candles, right, are which these buy candles, right, will be one candle because we have five days, so it will be one weekly candle, which is another block. Right, but on this daily time frame, we could be looking at this breaker because this is the last. These three candles could be breakers, like one breaker in all. These candles were the one that pushed price to take liquidity above this level. Right, so price was trading into a point where we know, or we could be sure that there's going to be reversal. Right, so price traded, traded into this level. Right, this breaker. And again, into 50% of this uh, other block, into close close to the, um, I think, the open of the other block. Now, we again don't expect to take trade here, right? Because um, it's a higher time frame, it's big. But what do you expect if you want to be more conservative? We wait for a break in market structure. Market traded below one of the daily lows, 
right? So give us a breakage structure. Again, we had a breakage structure somewhere here. If you are not interested in the first one, this is good. So from after the break, you could apply a fee, right? Draw from high to low. You are going to get this level, which is about above what the equilibrium price traded into this fair value gap. Traded into this fair value gap and dropped. Right, so you could have had an entry here, go to a smaller time frame to find an entry because there's, yeah, there's enough confirmation, a breaking market structure that you saw in lesson one, the discount premium um, and equilibrium level that we saw in lesson two, giving us the reason to pick the trade at a fair value gap, and then we drop. We have this other block here, right? So you could be closing our trade just here. Eventually, again, price trade below the order block, below the previous low, and then gives us a breaking market structure. Now, since now we are joining the main trend after this breaking market structure, when you take a bar here, right, what would be the target? The target would be one into this fair value gap. This fair value gap. Mm -hmm. Target will be into this fair value gap or above this equal highs or above this equal highs because there was liquidity there. So these are the reasons why we take a trade. So let's look at them again. Fair value gap. I've, I think I've done all. Thank you guys for uh, this. This is the end of lesson three. We are also going to look at blocks in lesson four. Thank you.